Here's a drinking game for you uni students out there. Take a drink every time I say the word Pikmin in this video, as well as a shot for every plant-related pun that is made. Disclaimer, don't actually do this. It will be very dangerous. I do not take any responsibility for any hospitalizations that stem from anyone watching this video. Oh god, it's already begun. In an old video, I was adamant that there was still hope for a fourth mainline entry in the beloved Pikmin series. Fast forward three years later, and it looks like the points I made in that video have yet to come true. But does that mean I've lost hope? The answer might be a bit more complicated than a simple yes or no. Hey, how's it going everybody? I hope you're all good. My name is Peter Gargan, and for this video, I'd like to speculate some ideas I had for the future of the Pikmin series. Firstly, let's talk a little bit about the nature of Pikmin 4 itself. While it has been quite some time since I last discussed it on the channel, I still stand by everything I said in that video, and believe we will eventually see it happen. It's just a matter of when, and not if. Miyamoto himself did seemingly confirm its existence all that time ago, and many sources suggest that it was something separate from Hey Pikmin from the 3DS. On top of that, Pikmin as a brand has still seen some levels of activity in other forms, such as the mobile game Pikmin Bloom from last year, which was an attempt to expand the audience that may not have seen Pokemon Go levels of viral success, but could potentially attract further interest in Pikmin as a whole, due to the sheer amount of mobile users alone. We've also seen a Switch port of Pikmin 3 in the form of Pikmin 3 Deluxe, an event that I'll admit I was disappointed with initially, due to Nintendo treading familiar ground instead of doing something completely new with the franchise, as its first step on the hybrid console. But in hindsight, I think I now see the bigger picture. Pikmin 3 Deluxe, in a matter of weeks, became the best-selling Pikmin release on a Nintendo console in the entire franchise's two-decade-long history, so surely that's a good indicator to Nintendo that fans want more Pikmin, especially considering the possibility that a decent number of people that already had it on Wii U might not have bothered picking it up the second time round in reluctance to buying something they've already played, which was how I felt at first, until I eventually caved in a few months later, so who knows how much better something entirely new could perform financially. The Pikmin series is currently in the best position it has ever been in when it comes to the potential of reaching new heights, as a result of these developments that have unfolded ever since I last spoke on the matter, and naturally, a fourth mainline entry is the most logical way for Nintendo to capitalise on this momentum. However, while I would love to see this happen, I also have other ideas in mind that I think would be pretty cool and help the Pikmin series blossom into something greater, whether it's the form of fun little spin-offs, dramatic reboots, or representation in other forms of media. Let's get into it, shall we? The Nintendo eShop has been home to all sorts of smaller scale games that offer unique fun on top of the more ambitious AAA releases we see for a fraction of the price, with some of the Nintendo published efforts ranging from snipper clips and part-time UFO. However, the ones I would like to highlight are the various Kirby releases we've seen that are expanded on additions of side modes we've seen in the main games, such as DDD's Drum Dash Deluxe and Kirby Fighters Deluxe, both of which were little extra bonuses from Triple Deluxe that got separate releases that built upon their foundation. So how about we see the mission and bingo battle modes from Pikmin 3 get the same treatment? We can carry over the same game engine so that it feels and controls the same, but add new little areas to explore, as well as unseen before mechanics that will open up new possibilities for more gameplay variety that couldn't be found in the base game. Mission mode in particular is my favourite part of Pikmin 3, so much so that I've played it more than the actual story mode, I'm sure I would have done the same for Bingo Battle if I had enough friends available to play alongside me at the time. But I digress. What I'm saying is, since I especially enjoy these side modes so much, and are what keep me coming back to the game years later, I figured they might as well make a separate eShop release that expands on the concept. While we're at it, we could also have the other challenge modes from Pikmin 1 and 2 get the same treatment too, for even more fan service. When it comes to other forms of media that can be adapted from their origin medium into something else, history has demonstrated that games being turned into movies can be a mixed bag. However, we've already seen Pikmin tackle the visual storytelling of moving image through the short animated films that were distributed on the Wii U and 3DS eShops, and later on Nintendo's official YouTube channel, to what I believe to be great successes, as I find myself going back and re-watching them and still enjoying them to this day. There has also been some recent news of Nintendo officially acquiring the studio they worked with, formerly known as Dynamo Pictures, and now being officially branded as Nintendo Pictures, with the intention of enhancing the development of visual content utilising Nintendo IP. 
Although this could be interpreted as in-game cinematics between gameplay such as story cutscenes, I think it's very likely that we will see some kind of content that is purely watchable, whether it's in the form of animated series or full feature-length movies. And since the studio is already familiar with Pikmin, maybe they'll do something else of a similar nature with them. It's a possibility that I thought I'd throw out there. After all, I've always found Pikmin to be much more endearing than the likes of the Minions, in terms of small mascot-like characters that come in large swarms, and they could give the Yellow Blighters a run for their money due to being way less annoying and obnoxious, while also being highly marketable due to their cute, easily digestible designs. The recent opening of Super Nintendo World has so far prominently featured Mario as the main attraction, which makes perfect sense considering he is Nintendo's mascot after all. There also appears to be plans for a Donkey Kong themed attraction in the future, which is still part of the greater Mario universe, but I still think it's safe to say that other corners of Nintendo will eventually see representation in the full attraction. After all, it is called Super Nintendo World for a reason. Besides obvious choices ranging from the likes of The Legend of Zelda, Animal Crossing, Metroid and Splatoon, I really want to see Pikmin show up in some capacity. Also, good news for me, that could very well be the case. Eagle-eyed fans have pointed out that if you squint hard enough, you'll see some of the little plant people being featured in some of the promotional material surrounding Super Nintendo World, but it's unclear as to what this could possibly mean. Will these take the form of a spot the Pikmin sort of game you can play while navigating the theme park, or a full-on dedicated attraction? I'm personally hoping for the latter, but keeping your eyes peeled and seeing how many Pikmin you can find during your stay is quite fitting considering their canonically minimal size and mascot-like nature, so I wouldn't be opposed if that were the case. Either way, I consider the Pikmin themselves to be prominent mascots that are synonymous with Nintendo's brand, so it would definitely make sense for them to have a pretty significant presence at a place that attracts visitors from across the globe. There's so much potential for an attraction that creates the illusion of visitors being shrunk down to Olimar's size, as we navigate a vast garden with large bulbore animatronics as a potential obstacle for example. To me, Pikmin has always had the potential to be as globally appealing as Mario. Heck, even Miyamoto himself seems to agree. And I think a big part of what has made Mario such a worldwide phenomenon is because of his versatility in adapting to different games of varying genres beyond his core platforming adventures, and Pikmin could very well do something similar to a lesser, but effective extent. The thing is, it greatly depends on the concept of the spin-off and whether it stays true to Pikmin as its root. We don't want to see Pikmin Amiibo Festival or Pikmin Federation Force and leave the premise of a Pikmin spin-off with a bad taste in everyone's mouths. However, there are some ideas for side games that I feel fit the mold of Pikmin very well I could do it justice. A defend the base kind of strategy game that involves deploying AI controlled Pikmin to defend a base that could take the form of a garden growing fruit from all the pests, which I'm coining as Pikmin Garden Defense Squad, an idea that I'm actually planning to make a separate video about going into further detail. No idea when that will be ready though however. A Zoo Tycoon inspired simulation game that lets you observe Pikmin in their natural habitat perhaps in the context of a zoo-like exhibit for non-spacefaring Hokitaeans or Kopiates to observe, or as research subjects for a Hokitaean research lab, so we get more of an insight of Olimar's home planet and some interesting lore surrounding it. And of course, this would be the ideal context for the inclusion of an in-depth Piclopedia. Speaking of the Piclopedia, we could just have a separate entire app based around it, comparable to Pokedex 3D Pro on the 3DS. Just makes too much sense, really. I also thought it would be really cool to see an action RPG that utilises Pikmin mechanics to create a unique blend that freshens the genre up, comparable to what the likes of Super Mario RPG, Kingdom Hearts and Xenoblade Chronicles have achieved in terms of changing how we typically play RPGs. And now, it's time for what I think is the craziest idea, which I've naturally saved for last. The Switch generation has seen some of Nintendo's long running IPs take some bold new directions that makes their futures more intriguing to follow. From The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild taking the Zelda series into an open world context while bringing back the spirit of the NES original, to Kirby and the Forgotten Land being the first proper 3D outing for our gluttonous little marshmallow boy, I don't think it's impossible for the Pikmin brand to do something experimental and on a grander scale. And that is why I think it would make sense for Nintendo to attempt an open world take on the Pikmin formula. The main series titles have consisted of fixed base areas that are disconnected from each other in the sense that you have to select where you want to land before the in-game day begins and can't go to a different area on the same day. For this idea, I'm thinking we could have a larger interconnected world with diverse environments that the player and their Pikmin can seamlessly travel across. So how does the day system work? Well, 
The overworld will be dotted with various areas that upon discovery can be used as new landing sites that you can select to start the day at upon seeing them for the first time. Think about how landmarks in the Xenoblade Chronicle series works, but instead of being used for skip travel, you can just choose it as a starting point for when you begin a new day. This way you can plan where to land so you can either continue from that point, or select previous landing sites in case you need to backtrack. For this vision I have, not much else has changed, it still feels like a core Pikmin experience, but I really like the sound of the landing site area I have put forward, as I feel this would answer the question of how an open world Pikmin could work effectively. If anyone's even wondering that to begin with, that is. There's a bit more liberty to be taken in how everything else can be handled, but there is a lot of potential for fun and engaging exploration and discovery, and Pikmin as a concept is distinct enough to give this style of gameplay a refreshing take. And much like what happened with Pokemon Legends Arceus, we can still see the main series numbered entries coexist alongside this more experimental approach, so long-time veterans won't have to feel alienated with the changes being made. Anyway, those were my ideas I had in mind for the future of Pikmin, I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know where you think Nintendo could take the Pikmin series going forward. Do you have any ideas of your own that you'd like to share in the comments? Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you back here for more content on the world of Pikmin and any other games of interest. Until next time, see you later.